we are presenting to you the Biafra Ebo Prime Minister on the 21st of September 2024. Join the live direct and don't forget to click the share buttons to extend these informations so that other Biafrans can join this program as well as more victories to the freedom and its creatures of Biafrans. December, November, December convention. It is very important and imperative that will keep you updated every time when the opportunity calls. My fellow Biafrans, you must understand one thing which will become a norm as we go forward. Always remember, can you all hear me, Sonny? Yes, yes we can hear you, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Always remember that Nigeria terrorist state came into being through conquest and the forceful imposition of foreign rule which denied indigenous people the opportunity to negotiate and choose what they wanted in 1914. And it was called the amalgamation of Nigeria. Today, we are no longer comfortable in this amalgamation. We are no longer comfortable in this conquest. We are no longer comfortable in this injustice, in this faulty foundation, and we say it is time for redress. After decades, and of course, as we all know how government works all over the world from history, somebody has to rise up to brutally, ruthlessly resist them, especially when the government become evil, like Nigeria. Somebody have to get up and lead that change. And that's exactly what we are doing today. Like they have done it in America and other parts of the world. America took the bull by its horn in 1776. Against the same people we are fighting today in Prose. And that's exactly why it is important that you know the diplomatic wave of the Biafra government today. In the past weeks, the Biafra government has made notable decision makers in the United States, in Washington, D.C., on a diplomatic consultation over the Biafra coming declaration in Finland. And of course, this consultation continues, including consultation with a high level individuals across Asia. And of course, Africa as well. Like you all know, last week, the officials of the Biafra government met with dignitaries, policy makers, decision makers, including the Speaker of the House of Representatives of the United States of America. We will continue to educate them on the need for Biafra to become an independent state. We will continue to educate them on the need to support the declaration of Biafra. We will continue to educate them on the need to also support the Biafra self-referendum because Nigeria taught by locking the door of the constitution they have defeated everybody but we are smarter them so this consultation will continue even after the declaration of the 2nd of December 2024 until those who have what it takes to pursue and support the recognition of Biafra, we understand the need for them to do so. My fellow Biafrans, I want you to understand one thing that 
The civil disobedience that we have used for the past three years have yielded the exact and even more than the result we required and we expected from it. And you know, with all the propaganda, the blackmail they use trying to demonize our people, demonize them, not to continue to sit at home, they failed. And let me tell you, you know one of the things that usually come with is that, oh, you are destroying the economy. Oh, the sit at home, because of the sit at home, they have lost billions in the Southeast. Now let me make it very clear today. Any day they come with such nonsense, ask them. When the sit at home was not there, they were making this billion. What have they done with the billions? Ask them. What have they done with the billions? And what have the city at home now done to stop that thing that we are doing with the billions? Ask them, what have they done when the city at home was not there and they were generating these billions? Did they use it to build road? The answer is no. Did they use these billions to build hospital? The answer is no. Did they use this billion to build social amenity for you? The answer is no. Did they use this billion to give you national insurance scam? The answer is no. Did they use this billion to give you free education? The answer is no. Then why are they now so worried about Losing these particular billions to the city at home. Do you know who it is affecting? It's affecting them. That billion that we are looting is what they cannot loot again. And everybody is hungry. All of them. But sorry about this. Can you still hear me? Yes, I can hear you, sir. Ask them. How have this sit at home destroyed ordinary man's economy when they were not actually getting, they were not sharing those billion with them? How have this sit at home or this billion that they are talking about affect an ordinary man who goes out and sell market and feed his family? And if he didn't go tomorrow, he will go the next day to sell and feed his family. It doesn't affect them. And that is why our people discover that actually it is very, very effective. They feed into it. But the people that are subjugating our people to slavery were the one shouting and crying of economy. The economy that the common man never benefited from. The economy that the common man we never benefited. Before they could train their children in school, they will suffer and suffer and suffer. Why these people are making billions through the revenue that they generate from different states? Today, they are losing that revenue and they are crying of economy. I want you to understand also that for those of them today that are surprised of the, the wave that the Biafra government is making globally, using our lobbyists um, from different dimensions that we are using for the liberation of Biafra, they are surprised. They call it fake. They say it's a photoshopping. You can imagine. We will be posting speaker of the United States of uh, House of Representative of the United States of America. We post it on Twitter, our finance minister. And so, as we are today, as a government, we will now be posting fake image of a high top rank officials of the United States of America on Twitter, claiming that we met them. This is the level of idiocy of the people who have been shouting Biafra for many years. 
because that is what they did actually of course, of course they cannot uh, even uh, photoshop reasonable people but most of the things they posted for many years were all photoshop many of them everything is photoshop the photoshop that i said i'm going to bring sheep they use it to feed their ego feed themselves on social media the photoshop where i posted the guy that died in russia which i have refused to make a video to today the photoshop made everything about them is photoshopping that was how they were fighting behalf and now that's why nobody ever took them serious but today we are not in photoshopping in the government everything is real i went to the office of the president of finland to submit a document then that was like two years ago they say it's fake <laughs> and with my level in finland i will be posting that i submitted a letter to the office of the president of finland and it is fake i brought even acknowledgement from the office of the president Linus, too, the former president that they have received the letter where i was appealing to them to support the Biafra independence. They acknowledge the receipt of that letter, which evidences of Nigeria violation of Biafra rights and this criminal's political pressure group, IPOB Nigeria, they say is a fake. I want you to understand that they remain criminals and fake. They remain Nigeria political pressure group. Otherwise, under IPOB Mazen Amdikano, he was looking for 100 men. With all the idiots scattered all over the world, shouting IPOB, IPOB. Mazen Amdikano was looking for 100 men. Do you think he was actually wrong? Do you think Mazen Amdikano was wrong to be shouting for 100 men? Already all the Afro, where this illiterate will littered everywhere doing container shipping with IPOB money. Is it that Mazen Amdekan was wrong for saying, I need 100 men, where they have all these market women? If a market woman is, is, I don't want to belittle the work market women, they're actually very hard working people. But today, when we say that we are not going to use lobbies, we're not going to waste money on lobbies, was when we do not have the foundation. Was when there was nothing to show. You don't go and start buying, paying lobbies when you don't have anything on ground. That was what this pressure, political pressure group did, only to just entice people and scam their fans of their hard-earned money. That was what they did. They deceived Martin and the to be paying 80,000, even those people paying that money, $80,000. They were doing about a year with the same lobby firm. How many Biafras know that the same lobby firm that were paying 80,000 was the same lobby firm that was defending on Konjo Iwala? The same time. The same time they were defending on Konjo Iwala. And at the same time, IPOB was paying them $80,000. And you think they actually received that money? Now ask yourself, with this, they are so-called lobbyists. Can they bring one picture of them meeting anybody in Washington, D.C.? I want to share a story. The reason the $80,000 lobbies lobbying firm, whether they actually pay that money or not, the reason why that particular agreement was revoked was because of Okorafo, Uchenna. Uchenna Okorafo, the, the secretary to Onyendu, wanted to be part of the meeting of this lobbyist. And she participated in that meeting few times do you know who is the chairman of the lobbyist of the lobbyist like representing IPOB? 
Do you know? Now let me tell you. The person who was in charge of the IPOB lobbying group is called Ogwe. Ogwe he that doesn't know nothing in America. Ogwe he was the one in charge of the I from the IPOB group. Ogwe he was the one in charge telling the lobbyists that he is the representative of the IPOB. Uche Ndokarafa went to the meeting several times. Ogwe he will sit there and say nothing. In fact, nothing was being said, nothing was being discussed. That which Nukurafo wanted to raise an objection that this payment of $80,000 or whatever they were paid, that the money is being thrown into the ocean. They started fighting her. This was happening, bam! And Onyendu was kidnapped. Now, Oyibo. Oyibo came on board. Giddy, 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 giddy. He hired another one, they call Allen White. We did the Ashambolic Agreement. He started paying $60,000. In this, this time, I was the one preparing documents for Allen White. Allen White. I was the one, Simon Ekpa, was the one preparing, filing annexes, evidences of the Nigeria human rights violation against the African people. I was the one compiling documents day and night. I didn't sleep. But they were the one receiving $60,000. Nothing. The first annex, I filed it. The second annex, I filed it. Working with somebody in Strava. I am sharing this story because I don't think I've shared this story ever. At the point, I questioned why 60000 is being paid because I am doing this job by writing and compiling these evidences as an annex. I will do it. They will tell me to do it again. I will do it. And they will have some kind of proof. Read this annexes up to five times. I will not sleep to, to make sure that these annexes met the standard requirement of the ICC. At the end of the day, they will pay them $60,000. I begin to question her even before she begins to say, okay, now maybe we are going to stop paying them. Why am I telling this story? Then I said, we will never hire lobby. We will do this ourselves until further notice. Because you don't hire lobbies when you don't have any structure. You don't hire lobbies. And what are they going to be telling the people you are meeting? Oh, that uh, you are from uh, the Afro land, you, you are fighting for freedom. What exactly are you going to show? To show how serious you are. Discussing with the people if you actually have the opportunity to meet the people, what are you going to present to them? That you are carrying flag on the street? Is that what you are going to present to them? Or that uh, Nigeria is killing you? No! I know what I am doing. I have the template to get the apple. I said nobody will hire lobbies until the right time comes. And the right time is when we have put every structure in place including the government institution, in, and which includes the Biafra Liberation Army, Biafra forces, though these are part of the government institution that must be put in place. Because as we are doing this, we will not sit down and watch Nigeria kill our people and to use their picture to go to the ICC. No, we will defend ourselves as much as possible. Then we decided to start preparing for the defense of Biafra. If you remember, we started preparing for the defense of Biafra. Then the Biafra government in exile came on board. Before then, a lot of things that happened on the ground. Yet, we decided to have the first ever convention First ever, ever 
convention internationally ever first IPOB Nigeria never did it first ever international Biafra convention where declaration were made where alliances were signed and it become part of the history of the struggle after that we begin to put in place all the institution of the government department ministries we begin to appoint ministers cabinet members and all that and of course we begin to officially officially defend ourselves engaging the nigeria terrorist army head on iron to iron go to gone and they are hearing it now after we have achieved all these things we also did not just achieve them we also defined the Biafra map because if you want to go and do lobby the people that are going to you are going to meet if they are actually serious and real they are first of all going to ask you where is your map that question that i've been asking all this why is actually the right question from the wrong people then we define our map we did not just define our map we also created the state we allowed everybody on inside that map to define the boundaries of their state and they did they presented to me 40 united states of the Africa which is the structure that we have even before the emergence of Wazuriki and IPOB. I resurrected the plan of Ojogo, which is not known by anybody. Now, after that, when we see that the function, the government is functioning very well, including, before I forget, including establishing the de facto government in the homeland which gave birth to the map and the state structure after that we now say that okay we have achieved the criteria to be recognized as a state you can never ever be recognized as a state under a pressure political pressure group according to international law the law of montevideo convention make it very clear the criteria you must attain to be 